Realty Income Corporation is a real estate investment trust that invests in freestanding, single-tenant commercial properties in the United States, Puerto Rico, and the United Kingdom. If you know one thing about Realty Income Corp, it's that they pay monthly dividends. They emphasize this so much that they even have it stated in their logo. Realty Income, the monthly dividend company. This feature is beloved by investors, forming a cult following around the company. In this video, I'm going to explain what makes Realty Income a great dividend paying stock and explore whether monthly dividends are worth all the hype. My name is Zach and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. You should never invest in a business you don't understand. So in this video, I'm going to provide a full picture look at the business and stock history of Realty Income Corp. Founded in 1969, the company had the goal of using revenue from net leased real estate assets to provide monthly dividends that increase over time. Realty income would consistently grow, eventually becoming publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange in 1994 under the ticker symbol O. In 2013, the company was cited on Forbes.com as one of America's 100 most trustworthy companies. By 2015, they were officially added to the S&P 500 index. Today. Realty Income owns over 6,500 properties, diversified with over 600 tenants operating in 50 industries. Most of the commercial tenants operate retail stores, providing non-discretionary goods and services at low price points. Examples include convenience stores, dollar stores, and drug stores, which are among the most represented industries in Realty Income's portfolio. Most of the leases are structured as triple net leases, which means besides paying rent every month, the tenant is responsible for the property's operating expenses like taxes, maintenance, and insurance. This lease structure reduces exposure to rising property operating expenses and preserves a predictable cash flow to pay the monthly dividend. The company makes a strategic effort to diversify across tenants, industry, property type, and geography. Realty Income has a diverse tenant roster aimed at reducing portfolio risk. Walgreens represents 6% of their total rent, followed by 7-Eleven with 4.7%, Dollar General at 4.5%, FedEx at 3.9%, Dollar Tree and Family Dollar at 3.4%, LA Fitness at 3.4%, Regal at 2.9%, AMC Theaters at 2.7%, Walmart and Sam's Club at 2.5%, and many more companies just like this. The top 20 tenants represent 52.8% of annualized rental revenue. Realty income has exposure to 50 industries, enhancing the predictability of cash flow and lowering risk. Convenience stores represent 12% of total rent, followed by drug stores at 9.1%, dollar stores at 8.1%, grocery at 8%, health and fitness at 7.1%, and movie theaters at 6.3%. According to the company, 96% of the total portfolio rent is protected against retail e-commerce threats and economic downturns. This is because 80% of the total rent has at least one of the following components. Non-discretionary products, which have low cash flow volatility, a low price point, which is counter-cyclical, or is service-oriented, which is e-commerce resilient. 16% of the rent is non-retail, which is also considered e-commerce resilient. This adds up to make 96% of the total rent protected against the threats of e-commerce and economic downturns. Realty Income's portfolio is diversified among its property types. 83.9% of its properties are retail, followed by 10.9% being industrial, 3.5% being office, and 1.7% being agriculture. The company is also diversified among geography. The portfolio is split across the United States, along with a small percentage in the United Kingdom. The top six states by rental revenue are Texas with 10.7%, California with 8.8%, Illinois with 5.7%, Florida with 5.3%, Ohio with 4.4%, and New York with 4.2%. This diversified portfolio reduces risks and enhances predictability of cash flow. On top of this, Realty Income's business model is fundamentally different from many other REITs who focus on shopping centers and malls. The company's focus on net leases and freestanding commercial properties drastically lowers cash flow volatility. As you can see in this chart, the average initial length of lease is 15 plus years compared to the average lease among shopping center REITs being less than 10 years. The remaining average term is 10 years compared to 5 to 7 years in shopping centers. The responsibility for property expenses on the tenant rather than the landlord, 
The gross margin for realty income is greater than 98% compared to 75% in the typical mall REIT. This is due to the net lease structure we discussed previously. The rental revenue volatility and maintenance capital expenditures are low, while in shopping centers they're modest to high. The reliance on anchor tenants is also not present in Realty's model when that's a main aspect of shopping centers and malls. Also, the average retail property size for Realty income is much smaller at 12,000 square feet compared to shopping centers and malls averaging 150,000 to 850,000 square feet. This allows O's properties to be much more fungible, increasing their adaptability as a business. All these characteristics lowered the cash flow volatility of Realty Income Corp, meaning that the earnings are more reliable. This adds a level of safety to the company's dividend. This aspect of the business has been proven time and time again. In the Great Recession from 2007 to 2009, Realty Income Corp fared much better than their competition. In this time, their earnings saw a 2.1% compound annual growth rate, while the average S&P 500 REITs saw their earnings have a negative 2.3% cager. Also, the dividend grew by 9%, while the other S&P 500 REITs saw theirs decrease by 20.6%. Through this major economic downturn, Realty Income saw a 14.7% total return, compared to a negative 28.3% return among REITs in the S&P 500. The story is playing true once again during the 2020 recession. In July, 91.5% of total rent was collected, compared to 86.5% over the entirety of Q2. Right now, theaters and gyms are their only industries that are significantly missing on rent payments. Luckily, their diversified income stream allowed the company to be hit much lighter than many other REITs. On top of this, Realty Income has a much stronger balance sheet since the last Great Recession, and they're well positioned to come out of the economic shutdown strong. The company's strategy for increasing earnings is by growing the size of their real estate portfolio and increasing rent on existing leases. They're constantly using their cash flow to buy more properties, thus increasing their cash flow even more, allowing them to purchase even more properties. This is a constant cycle of growth for the company. In addition to this, they increase rent on leases through fixed rent increases, variable rent increases, such as rent based on the percentage of the tenant's sales, and hybrid fixed variable rent increases. All these methods allow continued growth of earnings for the company, resulting in continued growth of the dividend for investors. Realty Income Corp has seen consistent revenue and profit growth. Over the last five years, the revenue has increased from $934 million to $1.492 billion, which gives it a 9.8% compound annual growth rate. This growth is consistent with gross profit increases, as over the last five years, the profit has increased from $880 million to $1.4 billion, giving it a 9.7% compound annual growth rate. The company's dividend has seen 91 consecutive quarterly increases with a 4.5% compound average annualized growth rate since it's gone public. Over the last five years, the company's dividend has grown 4.38% and has a current 4.49% dividend yield. The payout ratio has remained at a strong level for REITs during this time. The fundamentals of Realty Income Corp are strong, and it seems like a fantastic stock to own in a long-term dividend stock portfolio. Plus, the company pays out monthly dividends. But do monthly dividends really matter? Are they any better than receiving your dividends quarterly? The going theory is that monthly dividends compound faster than quarterly dividends. This is based on the logic that months come more frequently than quarters. So if you're purchasing additional shares through dividend reinvestment, then you will accumulate more shares by monthly dividends because you're reinvesting shares sooner. In theory, this makes sense, but how does this play out in the real world? Let's dive into the numbers and find out. To do this, we're going to use my dividend reinvestment model, which you may have seen in another one of my videos, The Power of Dividend Investing. That video aims to display the benefits of dividend reinvestment and the snowball effect it creates. For our experiment, we're going to plug in the current statistics related to realty income, the current price, current annual dividend, current dividend yield, CAGR of the dividend, and the CAGR of the stock price. Once this is complete, we're simply going to compare how the results of the stock performs if they pay their dividends monthly or quarterly. Surprisingly, the differences are very minimal. With an initial investment of $10,000 and 35 years of dividend reinvestment, the total value of the monthly version ends up being less than $400 more than the quarterly version. This is a tiny difference that could end up being chalked up to a rounding error. Just in case my model is flawed, I also researched additional examples and they all had similar findings of a small increase from monthly dividends. However, these models don't perfectly capture Realty Income's monthly dividends and there is sure to be a large amount of variability under real conditions. 
In the end, monthly dividends provide a small increase over quarterly, but you definitely shouldn't be picking stocks based on this feature. However, many people still enjoy the consistency of a monthly dividend payout over quarterly. The most important thing to focus on though is the quality of the company itself. This is because monthly or quarterly dividends do not have a substantial enough impact to warrant using that as a basis for making an investment decision. Luckily, Realty Income Corporation is a fantastic business that is primed for growth in the foreseeable future. Currently, I have 16.27 shares of O, with a dividend yield of 5.831% and a cost per share of $48.84. So in total, I have $781.56 invested in Realty Income Corp. For dividend investors, right now is a good time to invest in O. The current 4.5% yield is among the best over the past year other than the peak, and over the last five years, it definitely looks like a good jumping in point. The reason I'm not buying more O right now is because I personally think FRT is a better value at this time. I think both companies are top-notch REITs and you couldn't go wrong investing in either. You can check out two other videos I've made on FRT if you want more information on that stock. I'll definitely be picking up more O if it inches closer to a 5% dividend yield. In the long term, I'm planning on Realty Income Court being a large part of the real estate sector in my long-term dividend stock portfolio. However, don't take my advice blindly and be sure to do your own research before making any investment decisions. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. I greatly appreciate it if you can leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you follow me on Twitter, link in the description, you can get real-time updates of my buys and dividends coming in. You can support the channel on Patreon and be a part of making these videos happen. The link is in the description. Please leave a comment below and thank you for watching.